It isn't well remembered in the rest of the world that Peru and Ecuador fought a brief conflict in 1995 over a disputed border area, the Sanipa War. Though the majority of the action was on the ground as troops of the respective nations fought each other in the densely forested mountains, air power played a small but important part in the conflict. On paper, the Peruvian Air Force, known as the FAP, no sneaker at the back please, was the more advanced. Playing off both the West and the Soviet Union during the Cold War, the FAP had several capable types at its disposal. In the 1970s, Peru had bought Russian Sukhoi Su-22 attack jets and then Mirage 2000 fighters from France in the 1980s. Fitted with a top-of-the-range multimodal radar and fly-by-wire controls, the FAP Mirages at the time did not have a beyond visual miss missile, being equipped with R5550 Magic Infrared missiles. Despite its limitation, the Mirage 2000s were one of the most advanced aircraft flying in South America at that time. The Peruvians also had older aircraft selling service, mainly Canberra bombers, French-built Mirage 5s and American-built A-37 light attack jets. But the FAP had suffered from Peru's economic issues in the recent past, and only limited numbers of aircraft were operational in 1995. With certain aircraft held back for defensive duties, in total three Mirage 2000s, seven Su-22s, four Canberras and eight A-37s were available for operations. Following a long history of conflict with their neighbour, the Ecuadorians had always sought to match Peruvian capability, and as such also maintained a comparatively modern, though small, air force. The Ecuadorian Air Force, also known as the FAE, had purchased Mirage 1 fighters in 1977 from France, followed by Israeli-built Kafir C2s in 1981. Additionally, the FAE had bought Sepicat Jaguar attack aircraft in 1974, providing a formidable strike capability. However, the conflict with CDs held back in reserve in the event the war escalated. Instead, the FAE would rely on simpler A-37s, like the FAP, as well as BAE Strike Master aircraft. Both these types were well suited to providing ground support in the confused jungle fighting that occurred, though they would suffer from the presence of manpads systems that both sides had available in some numbers. Having fought several times over their badly delineated border in the past, the Sanipa crisis started when both the Peruvians and Ecuadorians began to mobilise troops in late 1994. Several skirmishes occurred, then on 28th January 1995, Peruvian forces attacked and fighting in the air gradually escalated as each nation began to increase the amount and capability of the aircraft it was committing to the fight. Initially helicopters were used, then light strike aircraft like the A-37 began to be employed as each side tried to defeat the other. Then on the 9th of February, the FAP committed their Su-22s to the battle, launching 16 sorties on Ecuadorian forces in the Sanipa. The step up was met by the FAE, who determined that they had to establish air superiority over the Sanipa if their troops, fighting defensively, were to hold their positions. The 10th saw the FAE scramble four fighters with instructions to shoot down any Peruvian aircraft they could over the battlefield. Two F-1 Mirages, flown by Major Raul Banderas and Captain Carlos Uzcategui, approached the combat zone at first, followed by a pair of Kafir C-2s, flown by Captain Mauricio Mata and Captain Wilfredo Moya. The Mirage F-1 was the most formidable fighter aircraft in the FAE inventory. Predecessor to the Mirage 2000, it had a reasonable radar and good performance. Like the later aircraft, it was armed with 30mm cannon and R5550 magic missiles. On paper, the two were comparable in weaponry, but in fact the F1 was a generation behind the 2000, particularly in regards to its electronic suite and in performance. The situation was worse for the Kafirs. Armed with older Shafir II heat-seeking missiles, the Kafirs were formidable interceptors and capable fighters, but definitely outclassed by the more modern Mirage 2000. So the four pilots knew that their mission could prove disastrous should they have to tangle with one of the FAP's top fighters. But the FAP's lack of available aircraft, plus the speed of modern air combat, worked in favour of the FAE. Closing on the border, the F-1s picked up two bogies preparing to attack Ecuadorian forces. They were two Sukhoi 22s, fast strike aircraft that were Peru's primary attack assets. These aircraft had a top speed of Mach 1.5 and 
were able to carry a bomb load of 4,000 kilograms, that's 8,800 pounds. They were the most formidable bomber committed by either side to the conflict. They are also capable of aerial combat, equipped with cannon and air-to-air missiles. This was demonstrated in 1992 when FAP Sukhois had intercepted and engaged an American C-130 transport, severely damaging it and killing one of the crew, as well as badly injuring six others. But the F-1s were not lumbering transports, and were in fact built to tackle exactly aircraft like the Su-22. They lit their afterburners and raced to intercept the Sukhois, gradually closing on them from behind. Suddenly, their radar warning receivers lit up. They had been caught in the beam of an enemy fighter, no doubt a Mirage 2000. Ignoring the warning, the two FAE pilots closed, and Captain Uzkatsky fired a R-550 Magic, hitting the Sukhoi flown by Lieutenant Colonel Maldonado Bagaza. Meanwhile, Bandaras scored a hit on the second Su-22, but it kept flying. Ignoring the warnings from his warning sensors, he switched to his second missile. Getting lock, he launched. This time the magic cut in the Peruvian fighter in two. With their RWRs still screaming warnings at them that they were being tracked by enemy fighters, the two FAE Mirages streaked down to the canopy and screamed away at supersonic speed. Their manoeuvre succeeded, and after 30 seconds the alarms fell silent as the Peruvians gave up the pursuit. Now it's important to point out that the Peruvians deny that this occurred. They state that the two Sukhois were lost to other causes. But as both of their pilots were lost, it seemed only reasonable to accept the FAE's version of events, as tragically, the Lieutenant Colonel died in the jungle eight days after his ejection. And, in fact, the FAPS day was about to get worse. The drawing off of the Mirage 2000s in their chase meant that the skies over the battlefield were clear enough for the Kafirs to make their move. Vectors onto A-37s that were attacking Ecuadorian ground forces, the Kafir pilots managed to pick up the little jets at almost 8 kilometres. The Peruvian jets had been stationed in the arid southern deserts before the war, and were camouflaged accordingly. Against the jungle canopy, their paint made them stand out to the Kafirs, who opened their throttles and descended on the little aircraft. The A-37 was a very different bird from the Sukhois. Adapted from a trainer aircraft, the A-37 had been developed for the Vietnam War, Slow, small and simple, the A-37, nicknamed the Dragonfly, was designed for counterinsurgency work in war zones where they didn't have to worry about enemy fighter aircraft or advanced air defences. Yet they would in this case, ironically, prove better suited to combat than their far more capable Sukhoi brethren. The Peruvian pilots sighted the swooping Kafirs as they came into missile range. Both jets and their ordnance descended and tried to swing about, attempting to face the Kafirs and thus deny them the opportunity for missile shots. But the Delta Wing fighters were too quick, and Captain Moyer hit the lead Dragonfly with a Shafir 2, knocking it from the sky. Both crew managed to eject at very low level, and were later picked up by a FAP helicopter. Meanwhile, Lieutenant Colonel Hoyas, piloting the second A-37, was able to demonstrate how the nimble little aircraft could thwart attacks from the much more capable fighters, ducking and weaving at treetop level through the mountain peaks until he was able to disengage safely. The actions of the 10th would profoundly affect the attitudes of both forces. The FAE, confident after the victories in their air superiority, launched multiple interdiction strikes against Peruvian forces, whereas the FAP became far more cautious. Fighting carried on until the 28th, at which point both sides agreed a ceasefire. Ultimately, an international agreement would set the border, actually ceding much of the disputed territory to Peru. But the fight over the Sanipa, small and quick as it may have been, gives a great example of the fact that, in war, having the best equipment is not enough. What's needed is the capability, and the will, to use it. That wraps up this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you are interested in military history and affairs, feel free to check out my website, militarymatters.online. I'll put a link in the description. Also, have a look at some of the other videos I've produced. You may find something else of interest. Check out some of the links coming up.